glad that you're here for Praise in the Park. I'm excited to worship with y'all this morning. Would you stand with us?
stop the music. We're going to continue to worship. So at any point, if you feel like sitting down or moving around or whatever, I know we got kiddos. Uh, they can be rambunctious. It's good. We like rambunctious kiddos. Uh, if you weren't able to scan the QR code, just take your camera on your phone. There's a little uh, funny graphic kind of everywhere. Scan that. That'll pull up the lyrics. If anybody needs a hard copy, I believe we have some greeters with hard copies. Yeah.
Uh, part of our intention this morning is is just as it was mentioned. This is uh, this is praise in the park. Uh, we have a history as a church of doing this over the years. I remember when Jen and I first moved here back in 2008. We did this quite often, and it was just a great place and a great uh, just collection of God's people to rejoice. And as Pastor Matt said, uh, we want to claim that. We, we, want to, we want to communicate that Christ is Lord. Wherever we stand, wherever we sing, wherever we worship, that is the King that we serve. Uh, if, if you've been with us at all this summer, we've been working through the book of Ecclesiastes. And as, as I was thinking about, okay, do I really need to preach a, a 30, 35 minute message? Uh, I don't this morning, but I want to give you a verse. So we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, two parts of this verse. It comes out of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. It says this, In the day of prosperity, be joyful. And in the day of adversity, consider, God has made the one as well as the other, so that man may not find out anything that will be after him. I want to celebrate a few things. When we think about the front end of that verse where, where Solomon says this, we are to in prosperity be joyful. And so this morning as we sing, as we worship, I want you to think about a few things that if you were to rewind the tape at Rocky Mountain Church six, eight months ago, a year ago, what happened? What were the good things that we could celebrate? I want to name a few. We had four new believers come to know Jesus Christ at Rocky Mountain Church in the last eight months. Four people that declared with their mouth, amen, that Jesus, listen, Jesus Christ is Lord. We had over seven baptisms this last year. In believers' baptism, both adults and, and children. So, so when we think about when we think about gospel prosperity, that's what we're celebrating. We had new commissioned disciples, new members that stood before you and say, Hey, I'm committed to the process. I'm committed to using my gifts at Rocky Mountain Church to benefit you as a body, but also bring glory to the Lord. We hired new staff in, in Chandra Pike, our, our kids' ministry director, which has been awesome, and she's been a huge blessing. We were able to bring Pastor Matt on full-time as our worship pastor. Uh, and yesterday, um, we had a crazy, I called it Rocky Palooza at my house. We had all the staff and all the elders and their families, and it was just great to see all of the lives that are involved in leadership in this church. And our elders serve, our staff serve, you guys are key stakeholders in the vision and the values of Rocky Mountain Church. So, so when Solomon says, listen, if there is prosperity, if there is prosperity to be had, be joyful in it. And that's the core reason why we're here this morning, to be joyful, to sing, to proclaim, to remember that God is faithful. These are just a few things to think about when we praise Him, when we lift up His name, when we think about what worship is, because God Himself has been so faithful to us as a church, as a body. This is who we are. We're here to worship Him. And when we look at the book of Ecclesiastes, which can be a little bit of a downer book, everything's chasing after the wind, and, and it, it's, not worthy, it's not worth it to pursue money or work as your identity or relationship as your foundation outside of God. Solomon is beginning to understand and give us direction as to what should we fear and worship, and it is Jesus. It is God himself. And so as we continue to worship this morning, reflect. How's God been faithful in your life? Think about three months, six months. What are the markers? What are the things that as you worship, as you sing these songs, you can attach a memory to it? We're going to continue to lift up his name this morning. You can stand with us.
when you, when you look at the second half of that verse in chapter 7, verse 14, don't miss this. We, we, talk, we talked about praising when, when things are prosperous, when life is going well, when health is good, when, when there's money in the bank and, and the kids are healthy and the retirement account looks okay. But what about when life doesn't look good? What, 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 do, you, what do you do when prosperity cannot be found? Solomon says this, and in the day of adversity, consider this. Think about this. In the day of adversity, consider this statement. God has made the one as well as the other. He's made the days of prosperity as much as he has made the days of adversity. Why? So that man may not find anything out that will be after him. In the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other so that you don't worry about your future. What's he saying there? He's saying that we need to live in this tension of, of being joyful when, when prosperous things are in view, but also when the health's not good and the money's run out and the relationships are broken and tattered, what are you to do? Remember that God is as faithful in the prosperity as he is in the challenges. When there's little grain in the barn, there's, there's things you gotta overcome in the relationships that you have and your health is struggling. God gives seasons of joy, but he also provides us opportunities to walk through valleys why does he do that? He does that so you and I, so you and I may not find out anything that will be after him. If you knew, think about this, if you knew about your future, if, if you could have the next 20 years of your life in full view, would it inspire you to have faith in God or discourage you? I think it would be really harmful for God to give you a picture of your future. What if a year and a half from now you have cancer? What if, what if 10 years from now your youngest child passes away in a car accident? What would that, what would that do to your relationship with him? How, how would you trust him in those moments? It's easy to trust. When the barns are full... It's easy to trust when there's joy-filled seasons. It's a lot harder to trust when pain and, and travesty come your way. And Solomon knows that that's going to happen. So what does he say? Be joyful when the barns are full. And when they're empty, remember that it's in good God's graces that he does not give you a picture of your future. There's hard things. There's just potential travesty in our futures, and it's not for us to know what is coming. Why? Because we are to trust in the sovereignty of our God. That's what he's saying here. That's the whole point of that verse. As a church, we've been through challenges. If you've been around at Rocky for, for a long time or a short amount of time, any church that is full of people will have challenges. But those challenges, listen, they don't define us. It's, it's not a part of our DNA. We trust God with our finances. We trust God with the right people serving in the right places. We trust God with our elders, with our staff, and with the gospel that goes out. Now, why would we do that? We do that because we want to accomplish our vision. Our vision is this. We exist to elevate Right? We want to elevate our offer Christ in all things for all people. That's why we're here. That's what we do. That's the fruit of our labor is we want to see the affections of our hearts increased. Why do we do that? We do that because we know when God captures our heart, we can praise him in the, in the full seasons, in the joyful seasons, and we can trust him in the unknown, in the future that's not been given to us yet. And when we do that, Rocky Mountain Church, when we do that, guess what? It is contagious. When we sing and we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus, and when we say to Him in the car accident, in the cancer diagnosis, in the empty checking account, God, you are faithful and good. 
People need hope. You and I need hope. And our hope isn't found inside of us. It's found in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So see if you have time this week. Re remember, man, how many, how many times has God been faithful to you in the last six to eight months? In your relationships, in your, in your marriage, in your finances, in the, in the hobbies that you love, the people that you care about, but at the same time, also think and proclaim to Jesus that, hey, I trust you with my future. I give it to you. The wonderful thing about the body of Christ is that we don't have to do either one of those things alone. We don't have to be joyful alone, and we don't have to trust the future in God's sovereignty alone. We are His body, His people. So when we worship, whether it's here, whether it's in our building, we join a conversation, you guys, that's been happening for thousands and thousands of years. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And, and all of us at some point, God willing, when we see and we get to enter into that throne room and we get to cast our crowns at the feet of the Creator, we continue in worship. What a beautiful thing that is. And so as we continue in worship, hasn't He been faithful in your life? Hasn't He provided what you need? And then can you trust him with the future that the unknown? Because he's good? Because he's faithful? I believe we can. And so if, if, you're, if you're visiting with us this morning, if this is your first time connecting with Rocky Mountain Church at any level, we thank you for being here. There's like a cloud of smoke just like moving across the grass. <laughs> you guys are probably hungry. But my charge for you this week, you guys, is when you think about worship, when you think about being joyful, it's always attached to what God has done, not you. <laughs> it's always attached to Him being faithful, not you being obedient all the time. That's great. Isn't it encouraging that we serve a God that doesn't turn His back when you don't trust or when you're unwilling to be joyful for the things that He's provided for you? So as we wrap up our worship service as a family, Let's sing about God's faithfulness, His goodness, His sovereignty in taking care of us in our futures. Amen? All right, let's continue in worship.
church, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and bring you peace. Amen. Amen. Hey, I just want to pray for our meal and give you a few just instructions on how we're going to handle this, you guys. So let's pray and bless uh, the food here. Father, we thank you that we get to worship you. We, we get to gather into this place as, as your people. Or we might be here. We don't we really know you, but we're curious. We want to know you. We want to think the best of you. May this be a time where good questions and conversations can be had. Thank you for this food. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. Thank you for providing for our church. Thank you for just the, the wonderful people that we get to do ministry with. May you continue to be glorified. In your name. Amen. All right, you guys. We get the opportunity to eat some grub. And I think what the best thing for us to do is... Uh, if you want to head back out the back side here, there's a food line on the on the uh, sidewalk by the river there. You can grab food, sit wherever you like. There are trash receptacles uh, around the park here where you can dump your junk off. Thank you again for being here, uh, worshiping with us and praising the park. We'll see you next time.